Hi, Dave with Align Therapy here. We're going to talk today about the Schroth Method. And we're, I'm going to try to explain a little bit about the Schroth Method and, and kind of clarify what it is and what it's designed to do. I was originally going to have a model um, that I could show this on and show what's happening while we do the Schroth Method, but they weren't able to make it today, so I'm going to do the video anyway. Uh, but I'm going to show you on a spine model, and then part two, we'll do a, a part two video where we do kind of a similar thing, but we talk about it on a living person that you can see the, the movement. But I do think it's helpful to look at the spine and talk a little more specifically about how the Schroth method works with uh, a spine model. So let's talk about this a little bit. One, I remember when I was in, uh, well, I, I was a physical therapist, and I went to a conference, a physical therapy conference, and there was someone that was talking about the Schroth method. It, it was Hagip Berdyshevsky. She's uh, a great therapist that teaches uh, Schroth training, and she was talking about what the Schroth method was. She was talking, sh showing some videos on what it was. And I remember sitting in that class, and I hadn't decided to do scoliosis treatment yet. And really, even after that, I hadn't decided yet, but I remember sitting in that class and kind of being confused about what it was. And one of the biggest things that confused me was the breathing techniques, how breathing actually affected uh, the, the scoliosis curve and how, how that actually worked. In my PT brain, I was thinking, you can't, you can't specifically breathe into one lung or the other lung. But the further I got in training for scoliosis, the more I realized that that's not what it is at all. So let me try and explain a little bit about the Schroth method and what, it, what it's about. This is very similar with a lot of the other scoliosis specific exercise techniques, um, but we're gonna talk about the Schroth method specifically. So when we have a scoliosis curve, a little bit of, a little bit of education on what the curve is. So from the side, we have natural curves in the spine. This is called a kyphosis here, and this is called a lordosis. So this is the front, this is the back, this is the head, this is the pelvis. So we should have those natural curves in the spine. From the back, if we look at someone's spine, we shouldn't see curves in the spine. If we see curves in the spine, it's called scoliosis. And so normally we have a scoliosis curve that can go to the right or to the left. Most common is to the right in the thoracic spine. And then it can go to the left in the lumbar spine or to the right in the lumbar spine. We can have a lot of different variations on the, the scoliosis. Uh, there are many different patterns of scoliosis, and that's why in some of our other videos we talk about not doing the exercises that we're demonstrating, because your curve might be different than what we're demonstrating it for. So I'm gonna reiterate that when we do exercises, they're not for you to do at home because your curve may be completely different than, than what we're demonstrating on. So scoliosis is a three-dimensional problem. It has a curve that, that's on x-ray. We see that as the scoliosis. Um, we see a rotation. The rotation rotates. So if it curves like this, so we have a right-sided thoracic curve. We'll see it rotate to the right, and the ribs on the right side rotate back, and we, we see a, a rib hump on that side. The ribs on the left side, as we rotate, rotate forward, and so usually we'll see a rib prominence on the left side on the front. That's with a, a, just a general thoracic curve. For a lumbar curve, it's just the opposite. Uh, we have a curve that goes one direction and a rotation that goes that same direction. So we see the prominence on the convex side of the curve still. Most of the time with scoliosis, we also have what we call a, a sagittal plane deformity. So either a hypokyphosis where it's straighter, where the, the spine is straighter, or we have a hyperkyphosis where the, the spine is rounded more. Usually we'll see that this is flattened. We'll see that there's a hypokyphosis. So there's three dimensions that the scoliosis it presents with, and the Schroth method is designed to address all three of those dimensions. So we, we do exercises to try and reduce the hypokyphosis so we try and control that and regain a little bit of kyphosis for the sagittal plane. For the transverse plane, we try and derotate the spine. So we're, we're trying to derotate what's been rotated. For the uh, frontal plane, 
we try and reduce the scoliosis curve that goes right to left. And so we do that with a bunch of different techniques. Over the years, the Schroth method has been changed a little bit and modified. Uh, now what's taught is a lot of breathing techniques and a lot of correction based on breathing techniques. So what we try and do is with the concave side of the curve, so this side of the curve, because it's the concave side, we try and teach the patient how to breathe and expand into that concave side. So if we expand into the left side of this curve, if this is a right curve, and we bring everything to the left, the spine is gonna come with it. And so we can expand this side it expands upward and opens that concavity, but it also brings the spine to the left. One of the hardest things to learn in the Schroth method is how to derotationally breathe. Sounds kind of complex, and it is kind of complex. Um, and what we, what we need to do is we need to breathe forward on the side that's back too far, and we need to breathe, breathe back on the side that is forward too far. And it sounds pretty complex, but a lot of times people really get it as we do some tactile or, or touch feedback on where they're supposed to breathe. So a lot of times we'll have them breathe forward by, by touching their ribs on the right side and have them breathe forward. And then we'll have them expand outward and backward on that concave side with some, some tactile feedback so that they can feel what that's like. So that's really what we're doing. We're, we're doing all three dimensions and we're trying to reduce the curve by using the lungs, which are, you know, they, they can provide some good force within the trunk. And as we expand that, we can open areas that are tight. We can expand laterally. We can expand backwards and forwards. Um, and anyone says that says you can't do that, uh, I've, I've seen it happen. For eight years, I've been able to see kids and adults that have been able to expand to different areas. And it's not that we're expanding one lung and not the other. The idea is that we're allowing expansion in one area and we're restricting expansion in another area. We use muscles to do that and we allow that expansion to happen in the concave side and to go forward on the, on the convex side and backward on the, the concave side. And we allow that motion to happen while we restrict the motion in the other planes. The hard part is most people don't just have one curve. Some people have one curve. Uh, I don't know the statistics on that, but um, most of our patients have two curves. And so we have to teach them how to do those corrections in each of their curves without affecting the other curve. Because if we're trying to reduce this curve to the right and we push it to the left, but we have a curve down here that goes to the left, we better be careful not to push that one to the left, or we create more curve down here and less curve up here. Uh, the Schroth method is using the muscles to create a force that is going against the curve, just like a brace. A brace, a scoliosis brace is gonna do the same thing, but we're trying to get those internal muscles to create a, a block so that the scoliosis doesn't progress that way. We're using the lungs to expand into the concavity and get some derotation of the spine. And it's really cool to watch as, as I've been doing the Schroth method more, it's been cool to see that people can actually do it. I know um, online on some of our other videos, some people express how difficult the method is to learn and it is challenging to learn. We're changing things that have been, that have been ingrained in, in people for a long time, years, decades sometimes. And it's not easy to just totally uh, revert and, and do the opposite of that. So it does, it does, take, uh, it does take work and it does take um, focus. But with work and with consistency, we see that this changes the curve. We see that this stabilizes the curve and can stop progression of the curve. Uh, sometimes it doesn't always stop progression of the curve. We can't make that promise with everyone, but uh, I've seen some great results with the Schroth method. So the Schroth method, if we boil it down, it's a three-dimensional technique using muscles and breathing patterns to reduce progression of the curve and to reduce the, the forces that 
act on the curve, creating pain, creating progression, creating those things. And so we can simplify it, but it is a fairly complex, uh, complex treatment technique and it does take a little bit to learn. So don't, don't give up if it's challenging. Make sure that you are doing your best and doing it consistently and you'll have good results. This has been around for a long time and it's the, the most researched of the scoliosis treatment methods that are conservative. So I encourage you, if you are doing Schroth, that be consistent and do it really well. Do the exercises well. Don't just do them, do them well. If you are looking for something to stop progression of the curve, to reduce pain, to improve your posture or the look of the scoliosis, the Schroth method is, is where it's at. Uh, there's no other method that has been shown to be as effective with that. So hopefully this was helpful. You can see more Schroth method information on our website, uh, aligntherapyutah.com. And you can see some other videos. I demonstrate the Schroth method in some other videos. And I think it would be helpful for anyone looking into this to, to watch some videos, make sure it's right for you, and, and go into it knowing what it's like. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.